We've worked with Thermal Grizzly quite a bit in the past. We've also tested carbonate pads extensively in the past and advertised them extensively. I'm sure you've seen at least one of our pre-rolls from them. But we have not tested these on expensive graphics cards. How good will a carbonate pad perform in something like an RTX 2080 Super? We're gonna find out in this video. Stay with me. The stylish Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 offers exceptional cooling while maintaining a silent profile thanks to a PWM Shadow Wings 2 fan. And with a 190 watt TDP, expect plenty of overclocking headroom. Click the link below to learn more. So in this video, we're gonna be using one graphics card for all of our tests. I wanna get that out of the way up front. This is the EVJ RTX 2080 Super XC. It's a beautiful, uh, similar to like an ACX 2.0, 3.0 cooler. Has a semi-transparent shroud. It's a beast of a card, one of my favorite on the market. So we're gonna run three sets of tests in this video as well. The first will be with the stock thermal compound, which is usually not that great. Although for a card like this, I imagine it's not gonna be too trashy. Uh, after those tests have been run, we're gonna switch to carbonate pads. Uh, this one here is actually a 32 by 32 millimeter pad. We can cut them down though. I asked Roman, these are easy to cut. Uh, you don't want these to be too large, especially for GPUs because uh, carbonate pads are conductive electrically. And if you have these touching SMBs, you could short something and potentially kill your entire card. Don't wanna do that in a seven, $800 card like this. After we've run the carbonate pad test, then for the third set of tests, we're gonna switch to cryonaut. This is uh, a, a, it's a solution of choice, let's say, for high-end graphics cards. This is gonna be some of the best stuff you can buy on the market, uh, and it should lower temps considerably. Uh, I expect this will be the best by maybe four or five degrees. Um, depends on what the stock temps are. Uh, and I think carbonate pads are gonna perform similarly to the stock thermal compound. So let's see what she looks like first. Oh my, oh yeah. This is, a, this is a beefy card right here. Nate, have you ever seen a more beautiful card? Yes. Are you, are you serious, bro? Oh. Okay, no, no joke though. This is like one of the sexiest cards I've ever seen. I love this transparent shroud. You guys see this back plate too? This again, one of the coolest graphics cards. I've ever held. All right, so let's go on over to the test rig and get this thing installed. Are you freaking kidding me? All right, so we're going to do this as proper as possible. We're gonna uninstall current graphics card drivers. We have a 2070 Super in there now. Uh, we're gonna uninstall with DDU just to make sure there aren't any driver conflicts. We want these tests to be as consistent as possible between all three runs. So we're gonna use Dirt Rally for our benchmarks. I like using Dirt Rally because you can run the same benchmark in a loop over and over and over. So you can set a fixed time frame for which to benchmark run each test. Uh, that way you have a, a fixed time frame and it's, there's not gonna be any inconsistency in, in graphical usage. Uh, and so we'll turn that on. You can see we've got system stats up here in the top left. So GPU temperature, that's 65C. This is our GPU core clock. We're gonna wanna watch this as well because I'm sure this will be impacted by the load temperature, although right now it's not very hot. Uh, this is GPU usage. Uh, and then we also have memory uh, frequency there as well, which might also be impacted by temperatures. So we're gonna run the benchmark. We're gonna run it for, I think we're gonna do 30 minutes at a time. We'll come back in 30 minutes and see uh, what is going on with the graphics card. Uh, also, my bad, I said this was usage, but this is fan speed. So we have both fans here. They're turning right now at the same uh, rate, but this is percent of maximum fan RPM. So right now about 60% load for both fans. So we expect this to increase as the GPU temperature over here increases. Now it's time to take this apart. Obviously this will introduce slight variance because I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be tiny, tiny differences in how these are torqued down but uh, I'll try to be as consistent as possible. Again, uh, I should, we, we should expect the carbonate pad to cool as efficiently as the thermal paste, the stock thermal paste on this card, assuming EBJ isn't using some crazy superhuman, superhuman really, uh, crazy like experimental thermal paste or oh, maybe they were using cryonite and we just didn't know it. Okay. All right, let's see if that was all we needed to do. Awesome. Okay, so I'll just slide right off. Cool, so literally four screws here uh, over the GPU, and then you just have one uh, kind of a plastic composite bracket that holds the uh, fin stack in toward the end of the card where there aren't really screws holding the cooler down. Uh, so that's actually really simple to do. We'll clean up this thermal compound here, which actually appears to be pretty high quality stuff. 
Uh, it doesn't look like it's cured. Uh, and it's probably a compound that doesn't cure like cryonaut. And we'll replace this with thermal pad. We'll cut it down to size. Uh, making sure it doesn't touch the SMDs, of course, and we'd be good to go. We're gonna use isopropyl to clean up the remnants. We don't really want any of the old thermal compound on here when we apply the carbonate pad. So I'm gonna do my best to get uh, all of it up, at least from the top of the die where the carbonate pad will make contact. Besides, it's not really as important. And what we also should do, just to be safe, um, I'm not sure if this is what Roman recommends, but uh, off the top of my head, I think it'd be a good idea to use nail polish to uh, cover up these SMDs just in case the thermal pad slides around a bit. Okay, can you see yourself in the reflection, Nate? Oh yeah. That means we're good to go. All right, so that is the cut down carbon pad. You can, of course, buy these uh, compatible with the 2080 and 2080 Ti. Uh, dies, which are different in size, but uh, you can also cut these pads, which is convenient. So you can, you know, cut it down to size if you buy a bigger one. Uh, I, again, I recommend you use a nail polish uh, or, or something that, that will protect these SMDs. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because I live on the edge. Now we're going to sandwich the cooler down straight from the top. Try not to slide that pad around. So if temperatures are wildly off, we'll know that something catastrophic happened to the placement of the pad, but uh, I've done this a couple of times on cheaper graphics cards that uh, have much lower TDPs. So I know that this method can work if it's done properly. Okay, so the card fires up. That's a good thing. Nothing blew up. Okay, so now we're gonna reopen Dirt Rally. Idle temps look, look good. Uh, nothing too alarming there. And uh, the fans are off right now. That's what those indicate. We're gonna run another 30 minute cycle. We'll be able to compare this to the first. Uh, and then we'll swap out for the Cryonaut. And I know you guys have already seen this once, but uh, I'm letting you know that we're swapping out the Carbonaut pad now for Cryonaut. We'll run three tests with Cryonaut, average those temps, and then we'll report back. Now, the one downside of Carbonaut pad reuse I've found after using these for quite a while is that they tend to stick to the surface uh, that they're squished between. This one's not too bad though. Now I've got a fresh batch of the cryonaut solution here. We're gonna use the applicator tool to make sure that this is spread out evenly over the die. We want all of this mirror to be covered by the cryonaut after the cooler is sandwiched back on. But we don't want too much to where it, you know, too much of it spills over. So now I've pulled back on the tube just a bit so we're not releasing any more paste. And we can spread this out over the die. All right, so we had uh, just a tiny bit of uh, spillage here over the side of the die. It's not terrible though, uh, and this isn't conductive, which is great. Uh, and this ensures that we'll have full coverage uh, with the Cryonaut solution. So now we're gonna reinstall the cooler one last time. I think I'm gonna leave this on the, the graphics card permanently because I think this will perform the best, uh, just given my past experience with this stuff. So let's reconnect the cooler and Swing it back over to the system. All right, and three last two rods here with that cryonaut stuff, making sure all of our in-game settings are identical. Going down to benchmark mode, gonna loop that, and we'll be right back. All right, so we've got quite a bit of data to go over, and I'll try to squeeze this into a two or three minute time frame here. So I have the average FPS of the stock run, uh, as well as the carbon carbonaut pad and the cryonaut pad, uh, and the cryonaut solution actually gave us the highest FPS but if you look at side-by-side -side gameplay, uh, the stock compound actually yielded lower temperatures overall, which also resulted in a uh, lower fan curve. It was a quieter card. You could actually hear the difference. It was noticeable. Just even five or 6% was noticeable once you passed about 50 or 60% load. Now, as for the Carbonaut pad, it didn't do as great as frankly I expected, but still not terrible. I think at the peak, we saw 81 degrees Celsius during the dirt rally loop, which was about two to three degrees warmer than the cryonaut stuff uh, and then that was in turn another two degrees warmer than the stock solution now so you know you just look at the temperatures and you might think okay well the stock paste is actually better than the premium cryonaut paste what's up with that 
Part of the fact is that EBJ had really good pace to begin with, it's just the consistency of it. It looked like a good quality compound. But the other part of it is, remember, we didn't lock the fans. So the cryonaut solution was yielding higher temperatures, but the card was able to maintain higher boost frequencies as a result of the better heat transfer between the die and the cooler. And as a result, we got a higher average FPS out of it. Granted, it was only a you know three or four FPS overall, but that is noticeable. That's definitely a change. If you look at between the Carbonaut and the stock runs, those average FPS deltas were like, I think 0.8 FPS. So not a big difference there at all. Most would say that's negligible, uh, but there was definitely a noticeable bump uh, when using the Cryonaut solution. So with the fan curves locked, the Cryonaut solution was actually two degrees cooler than the stock solution. And the average FPS across all three runs pretty much leveled out. Uh, the Cryonaut solution was still slightly better, but again, these are all within about one FPS of, of each other. And when you're talking about 200 FPS on average, that's not a huge delta at all. Uh, so the Cryonaut solution was, with the fixed fan curves, the coolest solution, but not by as much as I had hoped. And I think, again, that's a testament to how good the stock solution was. These are more for, I would say, like, like plenty of schools that have just, you know, uh, Core i5s, Core i7s, they run integrated graphics. These would be perfect for those because they run all the time and that thermal paste often needs to be replaced after a few years. These would be perfect for that. Uh, even mid-range systems would benefit from Carbonaut pads. I've used them even in my high range systems uh, just because they're consistent, right? Especially when you're running tests, I mean, most of you probably aren't doing that. Uh, but these are very consistent and you never have to worry about replacing them because carbon doesn't just disappear. I mean, that, that would be really weird. I think the, the big picture here you should take away is the fact that the RTX 20 the Super from EVJ, the, the XC model, uh, is an incredible card. You saw even with the Carbonaut pad, it stayed around 80 degrees Celsius under full load. Uh, that's not bad for a card that powerful, stayed fairly quiet and the stock compound is actually pretty dang good. So good job, EVGA. If you guys like this video, you can click that like button, consider subscribing, and check out Carbonaut Pads, Cryonaut, Paste, uh, what else do we have in there? I was gonna say stock paste, but we don't have, <laughs> I don't even buy stock paste anywhere. Uh, and then also the 2080 Super XC that EVGA sent us for this video and a future build video coming up. You can find that link down below as well. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.